Hello friends, in this video let us discuss the solution of mock test 12 which was conducted on 17th of August 2020. So in this video we are going to discuss 25 questions which was asked based on EMTL. Moving on to first question what they are given is, in the case of TV broadcasting, what is the polarization we are going to make use? So what are the options they are given is linear polarization, circular polarization, elliptical polarization. So in the case of TV broadcasting we are going to make use of linear polarization, nothing but option 1 is going to follow. Moving on to second question what they are given is in the conducting medium beta is a function of frequency what the first option they are given is it is independent second option linearly function of frequency summative function of frequency non-linear function of frequency we know that in the case of conducting medium that is beta which is a non-linear function of frequency so the suitable option that is going to follow is option 4 is correct. Moving on to third question what they are given is the depth of penetration of a wave in a lossy dielectric medium it increases with increasing in. We know that alpha which is equals to under root of omega mu sigma divided by 2 which is equals to under root of pi f mu sigma which is equals to 1 divided by delta. So, we know that f is inversely proportional to lambda or we can also write f equals to c divided by lambda. So, it is a linear function in the case of wavelength, nothing but the depth of penetration of a wave in a lossy dielectric medium increases with increase in wavelength. So, the suitable option that is going to follow is option c is correct. Next question. What they have given is the electric field which is equals to x plus jy into e power of j into omega t minus beta z. So they are asking what is the polarization it is going to exhibit. Whenever you are not having any phase term then it is a linear polarization. Whenever you are having amplitudes say x and y if both are same then it falls under circular polarization and one more condition is the phase between the two signals should be equals to 90 degree and in the case of elliptical polarization the phi should lie between 0 and 90 or one more condition is amplitude should be unequal amplitude should be unequal the standard form is x plus jy into e power j omega t minus will be there and beta value or beta sign is plus only so plus 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 equals to plus only nothing but there is no any sign change so it is left circular polarization the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct by looking at the expression how you are going to tell whether it is a linear polarization left circular polarization right circular polarization nothing but left sense of rotation right sense of rotation left circular right circular all these things i am going to discuss in a separate lecture so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct moving on to the next question identify the dominant mode in the case of rectangular resonant cavity so the dominant mode is te101 or tm110 so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct and in the case of square waveguide the dominant mode is in the case of rectangular waveguide we know that the dominant mode is te10 here you will be having the dimensions as a and b but if i am talking about a square waveguide so here a should be equals to b nothing but the dominant mode it can be either te01 or it can be te10 also or it can be tm11 also so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 4 is correct moving on to the next question copper always behaves as a conductor conductor or dielectric depending on electric field strength conductor or dielectric depending on frequency that is applied conductor or dielectric depending on the electric current density we know that if you want to classify a material into a conductor insulator or dielectric we are going to make use of last tangent that is sigma divided by omega e which is equals to conduction current density divided by displacement current density so we are going to make use of sigma divided by omega epsilon say consider the highest frequency components so which is of the order of 10 power 15 consider that value only so you will be getting this sigma value of the copper and omega is 2 pi multiplied by f value is how much say consider f value is 10 power 15 in the worst scenario you are going to take and epsilon equals to 
थ्री सॉरी एट पॉइंट एट सिक्स फोर इंटू टेन पवर माइनस ट्वेल्व इंटू एप्सलॉन आर सो अपॉन सॉल्विंग यू विल बी गेटिंग आर अफ वैल्यू विच इज ईक्वल टू थ्री हंड्रेड प्लस सो वेन एवर सिक्मा डिवाइडेड बाई ओमेगा एप्सलॉन विच इज ग्रेटर दैन टेन देन यू गोइंग टू क्लासीफाई दैट वन एज अ मेटल एंड इफ इट इज लेस देन पॉइंट वन देन यू गोइंग टू क्लासीफाई इन एज अ इंसुलेटर If it is lying between 0.1 to 10, then you are going to classify it as a semiconductor. So copper always behaves as a conductor. So the suitable option that you are going to follow is option one is correct. In the next question, what they are given is what is the separation between a maxima and minima? So the separation between maxima and minima will be lambda by four. Moving on to next question, what is the separation between a successive minima or successive maxima? So it is going to differ by lambda by two. So each successive and minima and maxima differs by lambda by four. But if I am talking about only maxima or if I am talking about only minima, it is going to differ by lambda by two. And average power, this one I have asked in mock test. So it is 0.5 times of E max into H max. and transmission line is distortionless when lg equals to rc when lg equals to rc rcb like that i have remembered so the suitable option that is going to follow is option 3 is correct for an rcl dipole what is the condition of l and lambda so the length should be very much less than lambda it is approximately 50 times so the suitable option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct Moving on to next question, what they are given is calculate the operating frequency of a rectangular waveguide now T11 having a dimension of 2 cross 3. Let me consider A as 2 and B as 3. But in most of the cases, A should be greater than B because A is width, B is length. So let me consider A equals to 2 and B equals to 3, and let us solve the problem. What is the operating frequency formula? It is C divided by 2 into under root of m divided by A plus n divided by b the whole square since it is t11 there is no need that a should be 3 or b should be 2 or a should be 2 b equals to 3 so it doesn't matter what is the value of c it is 3 into 10 power 10 divided by 2 into under root of what is the value of m it is 1 because it is fc of te11 so m comma n so m value is 1 divided by a the whole square plus 1 divided by 3 the whole square so since the unit is hertz nothing but you have to express in terms of second so i have expressed c of the order of 3 into 10 power 10 centimeters per second so if you are solving you will be getting 9 gigahertz nothing but option 3 is correct law of conservation of energy is given by gauss law faraday's law continuity equation newton's law we know that law of conservation of energy is given by faraday's law Next question: Identify the dominant mode in the case of rectangular resonant cavity. We know that the dominant mode in the case of rectangular resonant cavity is Tm one one zero, Tm one one zero, or Te one zero one. So the total option that is going to follow is option three is correct. If they have given the standing wave ratio rho which is equal to phi, and if they are telling us to calculate what is the value of reflection coefficient. then reflection coefficient which is given by 1 minus rho divided by 1 plus rho so i'll be getting 4 divided by 6 which is equals to 2 by 3 which is equals to 0.66 but if i'm talking about reflection coefficient always you have to take the modulus so the corresponding answer that's going to follow is 0.66 nothing but option 2 is correct moving in clockwise direction on a constant resistance circle inductive reactance increases and capacitive reactance decreases so this question is based on smith chart so this question is based on smith chart of transmission lines so the suitable option that is going to follow is option 2 is correct isolated electric charge nothing but you can find a positive charge or you can find a negative charge so it exists but if i'm talking about magnetic charge you can't find a north pole alone or you can't find south pole alone so isolated electric charge exists isolated magnetic charge does not exist so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 1 is correct 
Static electric field and magnetic electric field is static electric field is conservative and magnetic field is rotational. Magnetic field is rotational. So it is conservative and rotational. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 3 is correct. Moving on to the next question. Calculate the standing wave ratio that is rho given maximum electric field which is equals to 25 volt per centimeter or volt per meter and minimum electric field which is equals to 14 volt per meter 14 volt per meter what is the value of rho they are asking so in order to calculate the value of rho which is given by e max divided by e min what is e max which is equals to e naught i into 1 plus mod gamma divided by e naught i times of 1 minus mod gamma so e naught i e naught i i can cancel so what is the value of e max which is 25 what is the value of e min which is 14 which is equals to 1 plus mod gamma divided by 1 minus mod gamma so what i'll be getting is 25 minus 25 times of mod gamma which is equals to 14 plus 14 mod gamma so if I am sending this 14 on the left side and if I am sending this 25 on the right side, so what I will be getting is 25 minus 14 which is equals to 11 divided by, so this term 25 if I am sending on this side I will be getting 29 and 39. So it is 39 which is equals to mod gamma. So what is rho? Rho equals to 1 plus mod gamma divided by 1 minus mod gamma. So upon solving you will be getting answer as 1.8. Standing wave ratio, the value of what is 1.8. So the suitable option that we're going to follow is option 4 is correct. Last question for calculating antenna efficiency, the reference antenna you're going to use is a isotropic antenna which is going to emit the signal in each and every direction uniformly. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option 3 is correct. Once you have finished with the test series, you need to click on the submit. Since there are shortage amount of time, I have run with the solution video. If you have followed with the solution video, please give it a big thumbs up. Also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Craving Yan. All the best for your exams. Thank you.